It's 11.15, August 26, 2023. I hope you're all doing well. As for me, I'm very thankful that I'm up and about. So I'm in a bag, and I want to show you how I do that. Because there are three different methods that I know. So we're going to try this um, second method and see how this works. Well, I, I've already, yeah, this would be, let me just start with one, and then we'll go and show you different ways. So this is the apron that I made, just to let you know, and I can put my phone right here, and I can also place my glasses, my reading glasses right here. And that really helps me when I'm sewing, and I think that's really, really nice. So this is what it looks like in the back. Like this. I like support on the back. Okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to pull um, the side. Okay, I think this one works. Okay, so let me slide it up here. And I'm going to lower the lower the screen down. Let me get this and lower the screen down. Okay. So let me get my reading glasses on. And I'm listening to some old music. I love, love, love to listen to music. Okay, this this is going to be the, the bag. So what you're going to need is some very strong interfacing. And there's all kinds of interfacing. You could use um, even batting, depending on what you want. And people buy fusible. In, um, interfacing, but this isn't fusible, so you have to be careful when you're ironing it. So I've got these pieces. I've been making the little farm animals facing facing on the outside. This time I'm going to do a little something different. I'm going to have the farm animals as the lining. So I'm going to move this. And I found these leftover remnants that I have. And I think this is going to be really beautiful for the front of the bag. So I have just small little pieces, but I decided to place a piece of binding that is four inches wide, and I fold it in half, and then I cut it. So it's two inches wide. So the first thing I have to do is sew these pieces together, this one, and attach it to this one. And that will make a piece this large. So this particular piece is 16 inches wide. I know that because my ruler is is 15, so with one inch it would be 16. So the, that's the width. And the length is uh, fifth. I mean, um, fifteen is not fifteen. Let me see this. This is fifteen, so it's fourteen. Um, fourteen inches tall. Okay. Because if you were to turn it this way, it would be much smaller than the ruler. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay? So it's 14 inches tall. I have little piggies in the farmhouse and cows and cats and dogs and horses and bunny rabbits and ducks and lambs and roosters and deers. This is so cute. So this is like a farm um, print and it's got a border collie. It's, and what else did I miss? It has two different types of bunnies, so I don't know which one is the correct one. And it has a cute um, calico 
I mean a cute little tiger cat. And let's see, and it has a different type of animal. I don't know what that is. This one. So, but it's cute. It's very, very cute. So what we want to do is, again, I said we're gonna sew. I'm gonna sew these pieces together so I can have like the same size. And again, these were just leftover pieces. So this this beautiful piece here was just a leftover piece. And I thought, how pretty would this be if it was on the outside instead of the inside, and with this cute little sashing. So I am going to sew these two together. Take this over there. That's the first thing. If you're planning on doing piece work like I do with this thing. And you also need, this is the same um, piece of um, binding, which is four inches wide. And I folded it in half. I ironed it and then I cut this in half. And that's what created the sashing. But for the binding to go around the purse, you need something this wide. So this is, it's going to be, I said what, 15? So 15 and 15 is 36 inches wide. So you're going to have a little left over. 30 inches wide, you're going to have, I mean, uh, 16 and 16 is 32, I apologize. So this is going to be 32 inches wide. You're going to have some leftover pieces. Save that because we're going to use those. Okay. And then we're going to notch the purse up. A lot of little... Well, oh, this one is the one you're not going to notch in place notches. Normally I would place notches. Okay, so I'm going to put that away. And your... And your... Um, handles... They don't have to be really big. This is more or less for a storage, you know. So I'm going to fold this in half. So you're going to take two of them. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can't see what was lower. Let me use the squares instead. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's 12 inches wide. But what you're going to do is fold it in half and then fold it in. You're going to cut it in, when you fold it in half. So that's something we're going to do in a little while. So before we start doing all that, let's get to sewing these pieces together. This is going to be in parts, like part one, part two, and so forth. Yes, I just turned this around and it's still went from here. Oh. Okay. And you're also going to need some insert for the handle, something to reinforce. And this is just the salvage edge of the material. And I saved it. So this is really, really strong. This is going to be really strong to hold that bag. So you're going to need two pieces of that. But if you have rope, that works too. Okay? So let me turn this down a little bit. Okay. So I need to thread my machine. Oh, and also I forgot. This is a thick new... No, it's going to work. It's going to work. Um, you're going to need a... You're going to need your bobbin and your thread to be the same color. So let me see if this if I'm gonna use this particular thread. I'm gonna have to find a bobbin to match my project. So let me thread my bobbin. There's a little insert, and in when you go inside, there's a little hole. Thread your bobbin correctly. Let me stand up and do this because it's really, really, really cool.
This is the sewing machine that I've been using and that I told you I purchased at a, at a second hand store for thirty dollars. I can't believe it. I'm still pinching myself because I went to Priceless and um, I searched for Google and they run them. Uh, on eBay, somebody's selling one for more nine hundred dollars. And I already purchased, um, I found the, uh, I found the foot pedal, so it doesn't have a foot pedal, and I found the book, somebody was selling it on eBay for um, nearly $90, and I found it on a website and it's free so I already downloaded that. What else? I also ordered a six foot plug because you need a really long plug. The plug I found at the um, thrift store is very short. So I'm winding the bobbin. It's really important to have the instruction book to this, so I'm really glad I found it. The next thing I'm looking for is the knee lifter that lifts the, knee, the presser foot up. That would take a lot of load off of my hands and off of the machine. Very few quirks when I purchased it. It was um, it was acting kind of strange, like stopping and not wanting to work. And I was looking at the manual online, the one I downloaded, and it says that the sensitivity of this machine is very high. So any little debris that's caught in the machine, the machine stops instantly. So you need to clean it all the time. It's really important to keep your machine, any machine, any sort of machine clean. Okay, looking for And another thing that doesn't work is the needle threader. But you know what? I still know how to thread the needle in my hand, so I'm not worried about something like that. This has over 513 different stitches that you can use. So I'm using the pink, so I'm going to double check. And it all came with four bobbins and one presser foot. So I'm looking into buying some more um, baby lock feet that go to this machine because I have some uh, feet that I, uh, I have some feet, but they're not for this machine. <laughs> I forgot to put it out. <laughs> and this has a very unique little threading system. There's this little spring action that you have to wind up. So really read your manual. That's what I read. Okay. So one thing at a time. Now I can thread the machine. That's a nice beautiful machine. Like I said, I'm not worried about having to have to thread it by hand, that is not a big issue for me at all. Okay, so I the machine and pick the threader.
Oh, I cut the thread. The advantage of having a lady left, <coughs> pardon me, is having to be able to not do this. The knee lifter will automatically lift it. This has three different positions and it has a dual feet system. These are very high end sewing machines, dual feet system. Just to let you know. Is anybody bring a trash? Yeah. It's not even a trash. It's actually a, um, a box. And I put a grocery bag in it. You have to be thrifty nowadays. Save every penny. If you're, if you're doing this like I do, and you're spending your own money, you have to be very frugal. And that's a very frugal. To, you know, be careful with okay, my finances. Okay, so let's put this piece together. We want right sides together. And we are going to find a stitch that's a little closer to the edge. Oh, and I ordered some wonder clips. I think those are awesome. I've seen them all over the place. I've seen them all over the place. Um, little thing here. So I'm going to start off slowly. And just mosey on through. I need to place a bigger, a different needle. Because I changed the needle when I when it got thick. So I need to change this thing. This is for when I'm adding thick when it starts getting thicker. Then I go back to a more because right now I'm sewing fine fine materials for thin. away from me. And because this is a different type of pressure foot, I wanted to show you something. The normal foot for a basic sewing machine is only 7 millimeters. This one is 9 millimeters. And that's a big difference. That's a big difference. That's how wide I can get a nice um, pattern stitch. I put a, a new brand new thread needle in here. And after like 15 hours of sewing, you should clean up the sewing machine really well. You know, just like what you see me do. Kind of get a little brush in there and put things on. You'll appreciate that the machine will last for a long time. Oh, 
home again and walk the few dogs down. It's a sashing on that session. Okay, and I need to bring up so I can I think it'll be a good idea to kind of add some pins to keep it from shifting. It is so slippery up here. And they have that for a reason. Because if you do a little free motion, it's a lot, it's very smooth. So pretty. 
even if you can do like all that little farm market here before I purchase anything else. Um, contemplating uh, joining what they call the Fat Quarter Pool. That's where they send you materials for projects like this. Which are, you know, really minimal projects. Like even quilts, blocks. But it's something that I love doing. It's my passion. And I've never, never wrong, did anything like this before. I always made it close to, to just take away. But I, I also thought about, you know what? It's time that I make something out of it. I, I do. And I've been sewing and giving away things, a lot of my sewing projects, for over 30 years, not asking for one penny. Just because I give it away, and I really think after all these years, I, I, I should, you know, get paid for what I do. I really do. Because we don't get food free. I mean, you know, we have to go shopping to get certain things. I'm sure there's some programs we can get, like meals on wheels and things like that. But in reality, if you are not low income, you, you have to pay for everything. There aren't any free programs for people who are working, making a, a certain limit of money that makes them qualify for certain programs. So, you know, you want to be able to still do something with your life. I feel that I'm deserving to have a teeny little income and to ask for such a small fee uh, knowing that these quilts are very expensive. I mean, in reality, I've seen quilts go up to $2,500. That's how expensive they can be. So, I did that. Another thing I had to do is my interface that only comes in the roll, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 inches tall over a uh, length. So I have to cut these particular pieces out so they would um, fit into this bag. And I had no choice but to do I have to tell no choice but to piece them together. But that's okay. machine has a little measuring guide so I can really see what I'm doing. So I'm adding this piece to make my interfacing tall with the same width, same height as the bag. So you'll need two pieces of dinner face. And it's up to you what you can afford to get to make your bag. The thread, I don't buy cheap bread, I buy expensive bread. If 
because I want the quality. Stabilizer is also good for embroidery. Did you know if you're making embroidery patches or something like that, you want that, like this embroidery patch that I have here, you can hear it. It is thick. It's stiff. And this is going to last for a long time. Long time. This patch that I made, this little eyeglass thing for my apron. Okay, so. Thank you. 